BBOR Black Box Online Radio coming to you from West Virginia. Black Box Ned 88 on Instagram for the bonus podcast. And welcome to BBOR, the home of True Crime Talk Radio and your premier destination for unsolved mysteries, criminal psychology, and exploring the dark side of cyberspace. My name is Ned DeHaan, and I am your host as well as the creator of Astro Psych 400 here on YouTube and regular contributor to the Zodiac Killer channel. And a great way to support these shows is just by listening to some more content. But you can also go over to Amazon.com and have a look at the book Killer on a White Horse, written by me, Ned Dahan. It is a novel, murder mystery, inspired by the Zodiac Manson connection, but it is indeed fictional. However, who doesn't love a good mystery? And there is always the Teespring page. Feel free to check out some of the merchandise. And remember, being weird is not a crime. Let the show begin. All right, hello everybody. Today is Wednesday, and on Wednesdays this year, I've been doing a regular segment about Jack the Ripper perhaps the world's most famous unsolved murder mystery, and I would like to drop a couple of quick announcements and reminders before we truly begin. The first is that there will be a series of short episodes coming out on this channel, and they are going to be released indeed as YouTube shorts, one-minute true crime book reviews, and I'm going to be starting with the Zodiac Killer books, but on the weekends I'm going to release a couple about the murder of Jean Benet Ramsey from 1996, and one day I'm hoping to get to their books on... Jack the Ripper, and of course there will be the regularly scheduled lineup, Zodiac Monday, Ripper Wednesday, and of course the Anything Goes Friday segment. And in this episode, I would like to discuss one particular theory that I was familiar with in the past, and that is the idea that Jack the Ripper could have been a woman. This is often referred to as the Jill the Ripper theory, and more or less, I only was able to share one sentence with you prior to recording this episode about the theory, and that is that some people believe that Jack the Ripper, the serial killer who operated in 1888 in England, was a woman because being a midwife would be an excuse about how someone would be able to be walking through the night or the early a.m. hours with blood all over her clothes and not attract any suspicion. And before I continue, I would like to remind you guys that you can hit the like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family if they're curious about true crime cases, not only the Jack the Ripper episodes, but also the Zodiac Killer episodes and the Anything Goes Friday episodes, anyone who might um, have some type of curiosity about these subjects. And another great way to help out all of these efforts is to go over to buymeacoffee.com. Buymeacoffee.com slash blackboxnet88. There's a link to that in the description box. Buymeacoffee.com allows you to make a donation or contribution to help support the show. And anybody who makes a donation will get a shout-out on Zodiac Monday. But I have to give another shout-out to Batman66, who sent me an article that is more or less going to encapsulate the Jill the Ripper theory. And it is called Jack the Ripper of the 1880s, Man or Midwife. And I'll be reading this one to you guys and then responding to it. So let's look at the possibility of Jack the Ripper being a woman. 130 years ago, in an East London district called Whitechapel, five gruesome murders were committed by a figure shrouded in mystery. Jack the Ripper. In 1888, newspapers had slowly grown from being purely local and circulating around the cities with nations with ease. That's kind of an odd sentence. This spread the case like wildfire, and that flame still burns today. Ripperologists, as they are called, carry that flame, coming up with the theories that are sound that sound just out of the par. Despite these theories, recently scientific backed evidence in a Ripper letter has been found that could change the most infamous cold case, female DNA. Now theory that I argue strengthen the idea of a female Jack the Ripper or Jill the Ripper, as he as she could be called, were supported and brought into the spotlight. Two of the most popular theories are that Jack was a midwife or a woman murderer who was convicted years later after the Whitechapel murders. The third theory is my own, and that is one of the victims was Jack the Ripper herself. I mean, that's definitely going to be one of the crazier theories out there. I shouldn't have used the word crazier. I just can't think of 
a synonym that would match that level of intensity. The midwife theory is the most popular female ripper theory and one of the oldest theories. In the eight, in 1888, the Evening News had two letters that theorized that the murderer was a woman, and one sent by a particular J.O., and that's it, J.O., suggested that the murderer was a woman because it was a woman who was accustomed to midwifery and was more inclined to mutilate the bodies in such a way, as opposed to a man who was likely to be unmarried and unsupposedly would have been gentler and less brutally violent. Well, that's definitely not the case. I mean, I know that I'm supposed to read this whole thing to you guys, but I have to jump in right there. As somebody who talks about a lot of true crime cases here on Black Box Online Radio, you will find stories dealing with both men and women where people are brutally stabbed, where bodies are mutilated. Men do this and women do this. And that is not something that is completely specific to either gender or even the whole concept of how female killers are more vicious than male killers. No, I mean, that everything is case by case. It's a case by case basis. You will hear people talk about how things like that, like a woman is more likely to stab a person multiple times. I'm not seeing those particular pieces of evidence when I look into true crime cases because you will encounter very frequent stories of male serial killers being torturers, killing by knife, stabbing victims multiple times, and not only serial killers, but also just mass murderers, so to speak. And we could go through a lot of them, and if anybody has any questions about that, you can put them in the comments section down below, as well as visiting some of the older episodes on Black Box Online Radio. Some examples of killers who stab male killers who stabbed women multiple times, Richard Speck, who committed the South Chicago Massacre, he murdered eight women in one night by knife, Elliot Roger, the Isla Vista shooter, also stabbed three of his roommates, he even stabbed one of them over 90 times. I mean, this whole thing about how women are just going to be more vicious with the knife, it's not the case. Okay, though, so back to the article here. And this is the theory that was supported, at least partially, by Dr. Thomas Bond, who provided professional advice during the initial investigation after Mary Jane Kelly's murder. Mary Kelly is, of course, the final confirmed victim of Jack the Ripper. He released a, port that, a report that listed all of his theories based on the previous murders and the examination of Kelly's body. His eighth listing claimed that the murderer had no scientific nor anatomical knowledge and that they did not even have the technical knowledge that a butcher or animal slaughterer might have. While this seems to have no connection to J.O.'s statement and the midwife theory overall, midwives would indeed be expected to have a separate skill set with no knowledge of butchering or surgical procedures. And I did encounter this stuff in the past when I was reading the Mammoth Book of Jack the Ripper, and I did an episode about that in 2021 on um, some of the different theories in the Jack the Ripper case, and that is that there some people just insist that some of the victims were killed by somebody who had anatomical knowledge and other victims were not killed were killed by someone who did not have anatomical knowledge and this is the foundation of multiple killers theories that exist um very very frequently in the ripper world they would however have had a basic knowledge of the uterus and lower organs that's referring to the midwife all were taken from the victims at one point or another well i don't believe that's true i don't believe that um the uterus or lower organs were taken from the victim, Liz Stride, allowing them to carve open the bodies and take the organs out as desired and leave the crime scene in plenty of time to avoid discovery. C-sections were in use by doctors in 1888, though they were not successful, as successful as they were today for obvious reasons. In these cases, a doctor would call alongside the midwife to be present and allow them to observe the surgery. This would allow her to see how to cut a body open and to reach the uterus. So um, I think you can see where this um, person's going by saying that, okay, a midwife is somebody who's going to have knowledge of how the procedure is done from a superficial standpoint, but not having knowledge of how the internal workings of the body works. They've just observed the procedure, not actually participated in one. Of course, the big question is why. Why would a midwife decide to mutilate five women? There are different motives that I argue that are most probable. First, midwives are women that are either unable to have children or have many children. Well, I mean, is that, is, is that really a rule? I mean, if it is the former, it is possible that she murdered the woman because they, they were able to have children and decided not to have them 
at all despite that ability secondly and going after the latter opinion she might have murdered them since she had the option she since they had the option to have children and a married woman at that time would not have a say when she would become pregnant or the option to choose how many children she might have a prostitute like the victims could get an abortion and forego even getting pregnant a third possible motive would be the slow but sure increase of male midwives since the early seventeenth century a fear of being pushed out of one of the jobs women could have and could of this have driven the woman to murder instead of murdering male midwives however she would murder women and push the blame onto a man this would cause women to have a man being their midwife and risk murdering and pushing them out for a career all the while i mean that sounds a little bit ridiculous to me if she's trying to influence modern culture by um well making people think that men are dangerous therefore men aren't going to be midwives i i know that that isn't the strongest response but that just seems too wacky to be true if i can be very blunt the problem with this is that women still made up most of that of the career yes i mean i, I i'm sure that's that's correct and none were removed from their jobs yet there would have been no need for alarm unless the midwife had mania or was extremely paranoid see that's the problem with this type of thinking i mean and to the credit of the author of this post there's a counter balanced statement that is provided there but the fact that someone is saying that jack the ripper was a midwife jill the ripper that jack, a woman did this because she's worried about losing her job so she had five women murdered to get job security i don't think so but um i've always said if someone has a true crime theory i'll talk about it on black box online radio in 1890 on october 24th phoebe hogg and her baby were murdered later a woman's body would be found on a pile of trash in hampstead london her head had been crushed and her and nearly severed from the neck then an eighteen-month-old baby was found dead in finchley and the cause of death was smothering the murderer was a woman twenty-three to twenty-four years old and her she was born under the name mary eleanor wheeler not much is known about her early life except that her father was tried for murder and executed when she was a teenager which might have had an effect on her psyche that can only be assumed I also would suspect, just based, based on that very uh, small sentence, that there might have been some type of history of mental illness in her family, and not just um, experiencing a traumatic event of learning that her father was a murderer, but usually there is something hereditary in those particular situations. The rest of her life is not well known, but there were relationships with a carpenter named John Charles Piercy, though they were never married. Mary used his surname as as her own and kept doing so for the rest of her life despite their eventual split she quickly moved into frank hogg's house and started a relationship with him both had many affairs though their union was harmonious at least compared to her previous one soon though things started to go downhill hogg had gotten a woman known as phoebe styles pregnant and was planning on marrying her at first mary did not take this well though to af though after talking hogg convinced that their sexual relationship would still continue which kept her happy for a while after the baby was born mary decided to take action she invited phoebe to her home for tea and screams were heard in the afternoon and quieted until the dark and quieted after dark which is when the body was found her connection to the jack the ripper case is weak but considering her vague past and the method of throat cutting which was similar she had spiraled into infamy as one of the prominent female sp suspects for the ripper it also should be noted that mary was exceptionally strong at the time of her trial and that as a woman walking around with blood on her clothes would be permissible and she could pass as a midwife mary the ripper theory well again there doesn't seem to be the strongest connection to that and this is all um stemming from the concept of how someone is a midwife so there's this explanation about why they have blood on their clothes but i just don't think that that is relying a lot on hard evidence and it's relying a lot more on guesswork but i'll continue here if mary was the ripper why would she kill five prostitutes from whitechapel to try and puzzle her motive out one must look to her lover frank hoag hoag was noted to have a few affairs just like mary before he settled down to marry phoebe once she became pregnant it is not far-fetched that this theory as to guess 
that he might have visited a few girls while working in London, Piercy might have possessed some of the same fits of jealousy that she had with Phoebe and decided to get her competition. As was mentioned before, passing off as a midwife would have been easy, and many were freelance at the time and did not carry any sort of badge or papers to prove their line of work. That point, I would uh, think is a solid one. Mary could have easily lured in the prostitutes as a friendly gesture, murdered them, and returned home, all without suspicion. I also believe that a woman would be less threatening than a man, I'll give you that one. The flaws, however, with this theory are, in fact, that the only thing that connecting the Ripper and the Percy case is her abnormal strength and the way that the victim's throats were slit, and the fact that the walk from Piercy's home in Kentish Town to Whitechapel is almost a two-hour walk, though if she had a wagon or a carriage, which is doubtful, she had no need for a cart, and carriages were for people of a high class, though a taxi could have been an option. She might have made it to Whitechapel in half an hour. Despite this, it was too far to go there and return just to kill someone all on the weekend. The list of Ripper's suspects is long, having expanded throughout the years. Despite the conspiracies floating along, none suspect the victims themselves, most notably Mary Jane Kelly. And this is the stuff that I really wanted to get to because this is the theory that Mary Kelly, the final victim of Jack the Ripper, was perhaps involved in the crime? Let's read on. Ripper's last victim in the Canonical Five and his most gruesome kill. And now you can see, uh, by the way this article is written, Jack the Ripper is referred to as a he, even though it's entertaining the possibility that Jack the Ripper was a woman. Kelly herself was an enigma. History muddied by the fact that we all, what, all we know about her is what she told people. Her approximate past started in Ireland, where she moved with her family. She was married, but was widowed a year or two later, which caused her to move in with her cousins in Cardiff, where she became a prostitute. She moved around a bit afterwards with different men. All of this information comes from Joseph Barnett, who she met a year before her death and separated a month before the murder. Her appearance was also unclear. Yes, what it says, her appearance was also unclear, most notably her hair. Three of her nicknames were Fair Emma, Ginger, and Black Mary, and they denote that she was either blonde ginger or a brunette. Well, blonde, red-headed, or a brunette, I mean, that doesn't really narrow it down too much. The only thing all reports could agree on is the fact that she was a young, attractive woman. This would allow Kelly to easily find a woman of her approximate age and height to murder in her place. All one would have to do is to mutilate the face beyond recognition, which the supposed body of Kelly was in Dr. Bond's autopsy report. Well, absolutely, the body of Mary Kelly was mutilated beyond recognition. But this is a far-out theory that Mary Kelly murdered another woman to pass off as herself. I mean, we need some more information about that. The face was gashed in all directions, noses and cheeks, eyebrows and ears partly removed. In addition to that description is the picture of Kelly's body. The face is completely beyond recognition, her hair saturated with blood soaking everywhere. The only way that they could have assumed it was Kelly was the fact that the body was found in her room, which is evidence unless Kelly lured up her victim under the guise of protection from the cold or in the streets. The night of the murder is also a little more confusing. Kelly met up with a man who was carrying some kind of bag, according to the reports, which seemed, who seemed closer to her than normal, than a normal client might have been. As he seemed to be joking around and offering her the use of a handkerchief, they went up to her bedroom, and that seemed to be the end of that. And that was the last time anyone other than that man would see Kelly alive, or so it seemed. Later that morning, around 8 or 10 a.m., two different people claimed to have seen Kelly wearing her favorite shawl and walking around the town before the body had been found. Later, two neighbors of Kelly reported that people were at the crime scene, or people were coming in and out of her apartment all night, which would not make sense. A murderer does not leave his crime scene, especially since he would be in the middle of carving out Kelly's body at the time. The only way this would make sense is if she were faking her death and luring in some innocent girl mutilating her body so it was unrecognizable. Faking her death would allow her to slip out of London with no alarm and cover up any leads that could be traced back to her. I mean, I have so many questions about that. Firstly, this whole thing about how multiple people were coming in and out of Mary Kelly's room, there is a theory out there, which um, I have to give credit to Jay, he talks about this a lot in the comments section, about how Mary Kelly may have been having an affair with Prince Eddie, 
and that maybe she had gotten pregnant by a member of the royal family, maybe they were even married in secret, and she was targeted specifically because of this, um, I guess, frowned upon relationship, and that the other women in the Jack the Ripper case were murdered in the whole theory of committing a series of unrelated murders to cover up the assassination of Mary Kelly, more or less, and I shouldn't use the word assassination, but she would have been the single target, and all of the other crimes, all of the things like the Jack the Ripper letters and so on, those are just distractions, when in reality, Mary Kelly was the only target, and it was done to protect the royal family. In that particular theory, I could understand why there would be men and women coming or there would be men coming in and out of Mary Kelly's room while somebody is carving up the body, as horrible and gruesome as that sounds. So um, I just wanted to point out that that does not have to be the only possibility as to why Mary Kelly was murdered. I can also share some things with you that are based purely on my gut instinct. And I know that's not the best way to solve a true crime case, but when there's the story of how there's a woman walking around in Mary Kelly's favorite shawl, and she's witnessed by two people. Did that really happen? My gut instinct tells me no. My gut instinct tells me that it was Mary Kelly who was actually murdered, and that was just either a different woman, or that that story is untrue for some particular reason. But this article is going to continue onward by say, by by asking us a particular question that I think is more important than anything I've discussed so far, and I'll read this next line in the article. The real question, of course, is why? Yes, absolutely, that's what I was wondering. I mean, why would somebody such as Mary Kelly, again, I mean, Mar Mary Kelly from the Jack the Ripper mystery, have multiple women murdered, and then fake her own death by murdering an innocent woman and mutilating her body beyond recognition? I mean... Why? There are many reasons, most of them suggesting that Kelly had mania, which caused her to believe that the only way to get rid of work competition was to murder them, or that it was a fit of jealousy. I mean, that's a pretty nasty fit of jealousy, to just murder people and mutilate their bodies. I mean, wow, I mean, talk about green with envy, green-eyed jealousy to the nth degree. Another possible motive is some sort of backwards vigilantism, that maybe she did not like the line of work she was in, and in her point of view, the only way was to stop so many girls from entering prostitution, and that was to kill prostitutes, and to make them even more afraid of what might happen to them. Well, this is a theory that it gets discussed multiple times, and it goes back to how the Jack the Ripper crimes were used to influence modern culture, and I've discussed this in other episodes, particularly, well, the episode that I did called Did Jack the Ripper change modern culture, influence modern culture, and that's all about how um, Russian anarchists were very much opposed to prostitution, and that this was orchestrated by Peter Kropotkin, the uh, Russian anarchist who was using Louis Deemschutz, as well as uh, two other um, participants named Isaac Kosabrotsky and Samuel Friedman, and they were... Um, Again, trying to dissuade people from entering into this line of work because they thought it was contrary to the ideals of anarchy and freedom, meaning that no one would truly be free unless they were um, a free from a system of financial oppression, which was forcing them to be sex workers. But I want to get back to um, the article here. However, there are probably many holes in this theory. It is not deeply researched as one would hope, and there is only limited access to resources on the actual case that are available on the internet. And the fact that after over 100 years since the case has been closed officially, the theory is far out, and it could be that Jack the Ripper just exhausted himself, herself, or themselves on Kelly and finally decided to stop killing. Unfortunately, there is no way to know who Jack the Ripper was through DNA testing. We grew one step closer, but not quite. These theories might hold some truth in them, at least in some way, shape, or form. Despite the fact that this case might never be solved, it is still fascinating to view the psyche of other people through modern-day lenses and to watch people come up with their own theories. And I would like to cite some sources that are written down here. One more time, the name of this article is Jack the Ripper of the 1880s, Man or Midwife, and some of the sources for this are Paul Begg and John Bennett, and um, they're... There are a couple of pieces that they have called Bits of Bodies Turning Up Here and There in the Jack the Ripper Forgotten Volumes, and another one is called Jack Strikes, also by 
Paul Begg and John Bennett. Now, as far as the theory goes, with Mary Kelly staging the murders and Mary Kelly faking her own death, I think that that is purely relying on mental gymnastics. Imagination is a better term than mental gymnastics for the reason that, I mean, where on earth would be the evidence to support that? Maybe if somebody had some type of letters written by Mary Kelly afterwards, or even better than letters, like a confession, so to speak, like they had the diary of James Maybrick, where someone was allegedly revealing how and why the Ripper crimes were committed. But has that stuff been uncovered? I don't believe so. And this whole notion of how Mary Kelly would have murdered other women because of fits of mania, the fits of mania part, I can understand. And in fact, I think that that might be the strongest point in the entire article when that person is saying that Jack the Ripper must have had some type of maniacal issue that is driving him or her to commit these crimes. Like, this isn't just somebody who's trying to carry out an agenda to trying to persuade people, to try and influence modern culture, to try and protect somebody's job, to try and protect somebody's reputation. No, this person was very deranged, deranged, maniacal, and showing a certain indifference to human life. Okay, that point I have been persuaded on. But I also have to look at the more famous Jill the Ripper theory involving the midwife and saying that a woman is a person who is, um, only going to, uh, well, a woman is a person who would have blood on her clothing, and she wouldn't have attracted a lot of suspicion. She would have a very clear explanation. She could have also dressed in a certain way. A midwife would have been able to observe surgical procedures if she's not participating in them directly, and that kind of gives her the ideas and the planning. That part I can comprehend. I'm not 100% convinced, but at the very least, I think that that is somewhat of a more well-constructed narrative. I did take exception, though, to the whole concept of how women are more vicious than male killers, or that a man is going to be more gentler with the be gentler with the victims. No, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, male killers are vicious. Female killers are vicious. Full stop. And it's all person relative. Each person is going to have a different reason for doing what they are doing. And I would definitely like to look into some to these crimes a little bit more uh, for some uh, future episodes here on Black Box Online Radio, some of the other murders of the um, 1800s, and look for some parallels, or just for looking at um, the stories of the victims, of course, because I definitely explore those uh, types of cases, especially for the Anything Goes Friday segment. But what do you think about the Jill the Ripper theory? What do you think about the idea that Jack the Ripper was a woman? And I have to ask you, what do you think about this theory that Mary Kelly was um, faking her own death and that Mary Kelly was Jack the Ripper and she murdered a different girl who had a similar appearance and dismembered, or not dismembered, but she eviscerated her face so she would be beyond recognizable? I, I don't even have much of a comment on that other than the fact that it seems like somebody is just making it up on their own, if I can be very frank. But you can put your ideas in the comments section down below. And I do have a final note that I um, would like to uh, discuss with you guys, because I've been reading a lot of comments that you guys left on the episodes that I did on the Jack the Ripper suspect Charles Lechmere, also known as Charles Cross. And Charles Cross is a suspect who mostly comes into play because of his involvement in the murder of Polly Nichols. He is a witness and to discovering the body of Polly Nichols, and there are two witnesses, actually Charles Lechmere and Robert Paul. And some people say that Charles Lechmere would have had blood on his clothing because he worked as a cart man, and um, some things that would be on the carts would have been meat, and it would have been an explanation about how he could have had blood on his clothes and no one would have suspected it, or he could have provided the explanation, well, I work with meat. And giving a shout out to Jay once again, who provided a rather interesting response to that in the comments section by saying that Lechmere um, was supposedly it, have come to have committed the crimes while he was going to work, not coming home from work. So why would he have had blood on his clothing going to work? I mean, how on earth would that be able to have um, been an explanation? And this is mostly true when you watch the House of Lechmere video series on YouTube. They say very clearly that 
the crimes were committed along his walking path to work based on the times in which they were committed. And there was an interesting response by saying, well, people in the poor parts of London in the 1800s most likely weren't doing laundry every day, so, I mean, he could have still had blood on his clothing. And the thing I'm giving Jay a shout-out for is by saying that, yes, but that would have been dried blood, not fresh blood, and um, anyone can tell the difference. And I do have to agree with that for the following reason. In the same House of Lechmere videos that are presented by Edward Stowe, which you can watch here on YouTube, the, there's a claim made by Edward Stowe, who is talking about how the street where Polly Nichols' body would have been found would have actually been a well-lit street, contrary to the popular belief that it's just pitch black and almost total darkness because, um, well, it's in the early a.m. hours. He's stating that that would have actually been a well-lit street. So therefore, I have to agree that people can tell the difference between dried blood and fresh blood, and that's a big strike against Charles Lechmere being Jack the Ripper, so says me. But what do you think about Jack the Ripper being a woman? What do you think about Charles Lechmere? You can talk about any suspect you like. I also mentioned Louis Deem shoots in this um, episode and the uh, Peter Kropotkin theory. You can put your ideas in the comment section down below. Anybody can write the show at blackboxonlineradio at AOL.com. You can also get me on Facebook. My personal Facebook is in the description box. And there was always blackboxnid88 over on Instagram. And I will see you over there for the bonus podcast. Until next time.